Hey guys! So, Happy New Year everyone! Or maybe, maybe not. It purely depends when I get this video finished and uploaded. But yeah, here I am in my new Christmas jumper that I got. So yay! It's still Christmas! It's still Christmas! So, in a few hours time, it's going to be 2020. At least it will be if I get this video uploaded on time. If not, it's already 2020 and this video is now more dated than the fact I'm wearing a Christmas jumper. But anyway, here's the thing. Um, it's been a hell of a decade for Sonic merchandise. You know, there's been like a radical boom or an explosion in all the merchant things you can get. All the cool shiny things. So a lot of people at the end of the year do these like uh, top 10, top 5 lists of their favourite video games or least favourite video games. And I thought, yeah, I could, oh, I could probably do that. I could do that. That's easy. I just have all the games appear on here and I'll go, that's good, that's good, that's bad. But no, 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 no. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to do something different. I thought what would be really cool is if we had a look at the top five, or at least what I would consider to be the top five pieces of Sonic merchandise from the last ten years. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I've set myself a couple of rules for this because otherwise it would be very easy for me to just go, yeah, that's really expensive. That's awesome. Well... Yeah, it's really expensive. It better be awesome. And the other thing as well, um, if you're doing like a a top five list for Sonic merchandise and you've got no limit on money, pretty much you're going to be uh, you're going to be limited to what's inside this book. So what is this book? Well, this is the Washington Green Sonic the Hedgehog 25th Anniversary Fine Arts Collection, and Oh boy, here is something that is official you could actually buy. It is an oil canvas painting, and yeah, it looks pretty good. How much is this? £40,000! What? 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 Yes, yeah, that's right. This is a painting, an official piece of Sonic merchandise you can buy. And it is £40,000. In US dollars, that's just over $52,000. In fact, this whole book is full of official pieces of fine arts that you can buy. Like this sculpture, this metal sculpture, which I have actually seen in real life. Asking price, £8,950. Whoa! I better be careful with this, so let's just put this book down there. So yeah, obviously saying the most expensive stuff is not going to really work, and also it would be like just full of first four figure statues, and some of those are not that great. So here are a couple of rules that I'm going for when I, when I decide to come up with this list. The first rule is the price. It has to be something which is kind of reasonable. You know, maybe if you saved up for a little while you could get it, Maybe like a birthday or a Christmas present you could get it or whatever. You know, it's not something that you, not something that you could buy like, um, you know, every week if this was like a reoccurring thing. You, you know, that it has to be something reasonable or potentially a Christmas gift. You know, like a, a huge Christmas gift that you could get, get yourself. The other rule is I wanted something, uh, think, I wanted to look at things which had kind of like a cultural impact or had impacted merchandise, you know, Sonic, or wider merchandise in some way, or even impacted the community in some way, because I think that's important as well. Like, if a certain action figure came out and it had, I don't know, it did something really cool and all the other action figures started to copy that, that would be something that's sort of like a culturally impacted thing. So, I'm hoping with those little rules in mind, you'll kind of understand where I'm coming from with this. So, let's start with the very first one. And if you're watching this in the premiere, feel free to kind of guess what I'm going to be, what, what it is that I think I'm going to be doing. So here is, in my opinion, the top five pieces of Sonic merchandise from the last 10 years up until today, the last day in 2019. Okay, so here we go. It's alive like Johnny Five. It's number five. Okay, so we're cheating just a little bit already here. Um... I couldn't really decide between these two companies, and one of them's kind of at a disadvantage because they started making stuff 
just at the end of the last decade and then they made a few things from around 2010 up until 2014 and then Tommy took over for 2014 up until about 2018. So we start off with Jazzwares and Tomy's Sonic product line. Now I've got two items from them here. So why am I including these? Well, here's the thing. Jazzwares kind of broke the mold and broke the rules on Sonic merchandise. For example, if you went into a toy shop, and I'm hopefully going to be able to show you some pictures here that I actually found online. If they had like a Sonic the Hedgehog toy selection, you were pretty much limited to just Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and sometimes, if you were very, very lucky, Robotnik, Eggman, and Amy. And that was it. Those were the only figures or pieces of merch you could find. There was nothing else. And then Jazzwares went nuts. They started to release, we had Werehog figures. We had a Blaze figure pack, the first time that she'd ever had an action figure. We had figures based on Badniks. We had villains. We even had a, a Doom's Eye, you know, Black Doom's Doom's Eye that was packed in with a Shadow figure. There was a Silver figure. There was an SBO figure that was camouflage. And yeah, I know some of these sort of came just before the decade, but they still did it, you know, just after the decade. And they would do crazy stuff as well, like they would do flopped figures, they would do giant deluxe figures, and I know some of you are like, what, Jazzwares figures fell apart? Well, yeah, so did some of mine, but the fact is, if Jazzwares hadn't have done that, if they hadn't have said, okay, we've got all these Sonic figures and everybody's buying them, but why don't we do some of the other figures as well, like some of the other characters and see if they sell, and they did, we probably wouldn't have had Tomy also doing loads of figures as well and to kind of give you an idea here is one of the best figure sets that ja uh, Jazzwares ever did and I love this and just think about this for a minute this is a e classic Eggman figure we it was I, I can't think of a classic Eggman figure that looks like this that you can easily find because uh, like I said in one of those in a uh, video a few weeks ago even Tomy did their classic Eggman figures based on Adventures of Sonic Robotnik. You know, it wasn't on the video games one. And this one comes with two egg roll bows. And there's never been another figure like this. At least not that I'm not that I'm aware of. Not that you know this size that you can actually play with. That's sort of to scale with your other figures. So Jazzwares, yeah, they really went all out with all this stuff. And there's other stuff as well. Like there's a modern Robotnik with a. Metal Sonic figure. They did figures on the Chaotix. They even gave us a Super Sonic, a Super Shadow, and even a Super Silver figure. That's crazy to think. You know, prior to 2010, you would not even dream of getting figures like that. Yet Jazzwares went absolutely insane. So I couldn't pick out just one from Jazzwares, but yeah, they they really did move Sonic merchandise forward. You know, it really did show. No, no, no. If you release figures based on the other characters, they will sell and people will go nuts for them. And this kind of got um, amplified when Tomy came along, because don't forget, Tomy started off doing figures based on Sonic Boom, and they only had a few years to do some based on the actual Sega Sonic line. And this was one of the last figure packs that they ever did. Now, it's based on Sonic Forces, but I've got to say, guys, um, I didn't think we'd get a Zavok figure. I don't think we're ever going to get another infinite figure. I don't know if that's going to show up. It's not very it's not very clear, that one, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm sorry about the light reflection there, but... Yeah, that, that's, kind of, that's kind of my point here. Um, if Jazzwares hadn't laid the foundation, then we wouldn't have figures like this. And you can sort of say, oh, they're not very good quality, but... This is the best we have, and this kind of does show that... Yes, you can make figures other than the big main cast, and people will buy them, they will sell, people want stuff like this. So, well done Jazz, ja, ja, Jack Specific, <laughs> Jazzwares and Tommy for what I think earns a well good spot on the top 5 figures or pieces of Sonic merchandise of the last 10 years. So, let's move on to number 4. Here's the scores on the doors, it's number 4. Okay. So the next company um, that I actually want to that I actually want to talk about, which, which I think did the best piece of merch, which gets the number four slot, I actually don't have to hand because 
It's all in storage, and I really, really can't go through it all and drag it out. But the company in question, and the reason why I put this company and the thing that they made at number four, can be represented by these two plushies. Ooh! Now, here's the thing. This one's a Jazzwares plushie. This one is a Tomy plushie. Now, this is the Jazzwares Metal Sonic plush, and this one is the Tomy's Classic Supersonic plush. So what's the company and what's the product? Well, it's this one. This is the GE Entertainment, which is Great Eastern Entertainment's Supersonic plush. And you might be thinking, um, that's not a great plush. That's not, you know, that's not the best plush ever. It's a nice plush, but let me explain why. This is Tomy's Supersonic, classic Supersonic plush. I think it is a brilliant plush. I really like it. I think it's fantastic. If it wasn't for G uh, GE Entertainment, we probably wouldn't have this plush. And the reason for that is, if you wanted a supersonic plush of any kind, you had one choice. And that was the Sonic the Fighters supersonic plush. And that thing is rare. It is hard to find, and some people have asked for insane prices like if you want one of these now you're looking at one thousand pounds some that's what people want for them whether they will find someone who actually buy it because even i think that's a bit yeah steady on that's kind of ridiculous now well now you can get supersonic plushies for just 10 quid and they look absolutely brilliant if not better than some of these other stuff but it was ge entertainment that started pumping out all of these plushies like you had you had plushies based on the babylon rogues you had a blaze plush you had uh, they brought they brought back the big the cat plush they brought back big the cat big the cat had only ever had one plush up until then that was in the sonic adventure and they also did a super shadow plush and they did a supersonic plush but it was when they did their supersonic plush that all of a sudden people that wanted a supersonic plush could finally finally get one and they didn't have to spend stupid sums of money you know you didn't have to remortgage your house to get one and it proved that you could sell you know really niche plushies based on you know supersonic and other really niche characters and they also did a metal sonic one but i think it might have actually been jazzwares that pips them to that one which is why yeah this one's here but that said, if it wasn't for GE Entertainment making this supersonic plush, we just wouldn't, probably wouldn't have this one. And I don't know why he's sort of pointing his arm out to the side there. What's over there? I don't know why he's pointing his arm out. But that said, this costs £10. This one costs £1,000 plus. And it's like, why? This one looks just as good as this one does, in my opinion. So, thank you, GE Entertainment, for making these plushies and, and basically giving us plushies based off, you know, the less but lesser popular characters and the more niche characters, so everybody can have one in their collection now. And as kind of, that kind of paved the way for all these other companies to go like, okay, yeah, we'll take the risk on that. I mean, Jack Specific are making a Mighty the Armadillo plush next year. Do you think that would have happened if GE Entertainment hadn't taken the risk with all these other minor characters? I mean, I've got to say, guys, I don't think it's likely. So yeah, well done, and that's why they get the fourth spot on this list. So, thank you, GE. It's time for number three, and Knuckles. Okay, so I don't actually have this figure to hand. I do actually own it, but like I said, it's in storage. So in 2014, Sega announced Sonic Boom! Yay! And everybody wasn't happy. But anyway, that said, we did get some really cool pieces of merchandise. And here is one piece of merchandise which I think definitely should get put on the list. And I think it's probably a good spot to put it here. Because when I say this thing, you're probably going to all think, Why? Well, it's this figure, the Sonic Boom Eggman action figure. I know, I can hear you all already going, how is that better than a first four figure statue? How is that better than literally anything else? Well, here's the thing. This, um, this uh, ro Robotnik fi uh, Eggman figure, yes, it's based on the Sonic Boom design, 
yes, Sonic Boom isn't as popular as the standard stuff. And yes, it's like the Tommy standard action figure, so of course it's not going to be the highest quality thing. Go back and find me an Eggman figure, a Robotnik figure, from anywhere in the world that has the Egomatic. You can't do it, because it doesn't exist. This figure was the very first figure that actually has an Egomatic. And just think about that for a minute. The Egomatic appeared in Sonic 1. Eggman's first appearance in that game, if you don't include the box art, is in the Egomatic. Why has there never been an Eggman figure or vehicle that you can put him into? And, you know, fly him around so he can actually attack your other action figures? Well, it took over... what was it? Twenty... was it... 25 years? Nearly 25 years it would... yeah, nearly 25 years for Tommy to come along and give us, and finally give us, an Eggman figure with Eggman in his Egomatic that you can actually pick up and play and fly around. You know, previously they were just like static figures, you know, you couldn't do anything with them. But yeah, we got an actual Eggman figure in his Egomatic. And I think that's kind of important. It kind of shows that, yeah, we have all these action figures and stuff, but we're missing all these play sets and things, and please, please, please give us them. For example, we've never had a Death Egg playset. I would love that. But we also very rarely get Badnik figures, yet the Tommy Sonic Boom line also gave us a pretty decent selection of Badniks. And yeah, Egomatic Eggman. I mean, what, how, how can you not like that? How can you not want that? So yeah, that's why that one gets the number three spot. Anyway, let's move on. I've run out of puns. Number two. Okay, so what takes the number two spot is something which actually didn't get released until just a few months ago now. And these things have been highly sought after by so many people. And I think they're some of the best pieces of merchandise that we have had for a long time. So what is it that I'm talking about? I'm talking about these. The Jack Specific Sonic Pinball figures. Now, I'm going to try and uh, hopefully the camera's going to zoom in on those and not just on my face. There we go. Oh, they're the wrong way around. <laughs> hey, isn't that, isn't that grand? So, yeah, I don't know if we can... Can we spin right around? There we go! Yes! So, check these out. So, I did a huge video on these exp explaining why these are incredible. So, please check that out because I don't want to spend too much more time on them. But, why do I think these are so good figures? Well, they're amazingly cheap. Like, they cost, they cost less than the big action figures do. But, for the price of them, the detail on them is absolutely incredible. There's a good range of figures that you can get at the moment. And you can even get a Mighty and Ray figure. Like, whoa, I never thought I would see that. I never thought we would get Ray and Mighty the Armadillo figures. Let's just bring them closer so you can see them again. Oh, come on camera, zoom in on those. There we sort of go. There we go. Yeah, I mean, who, who would have guessed that we would get Ray and Mighty figures in 2019? I couldn't believe it when I saw these. And the also amazing thing about these figures as well is aside from the fact they're really high quality, well made, they don't cost too much either. They're incredibly durable, which means you can put them in this! <gasps> yeah! This is the Sonic Pinball playset, and this is what you actually put these things in, and you can fire them around this loop and they go flying out, and it even comes with its own little exclusive classic Sonic figure. I mean, these figures are awesome, and they're so cheap as well. The only problem at the moment is they're kind of tricky to actually track down and find, so you really got to look out for them, but if you can find them, they are so worth it. Please check out my unboxing and review video that I did on them, because I think you'll understand why I put these in the number two spots. But anyway, let's go on to number one. And what do you think, those of you who are watching along with the premiere, or if you just want to guess, what do you think I put at number one? Let's find out. And the number one best piece of Sonic merchandise, at least according to me, is... So, I had tons of ideas for things that could go here. Um, at one point I thought about putting the 
Good Smile Company's Sonic and Enderoid figure, and I then thought about, well, why not put the Tomy um, Deluxe Sonic figure here? And then there was also the Jack Specific Deluxe Metal Sonic figure. There are also the Bath Bombs. If you haven't seen my video on that, look at the Bath Bomb Sonic toys. Those are also lots of fun. And then there's also the Hello Kitty Sonic merchandise, which is amazing. And what about all the plushies that have been released? And if you were very keen there, you might have just spoiled it because I accidentally lifted up what it was. But anyway, this is what I think is the best piece of Sonic merchandise that's been released from 2010 to 2020. Now, the thing with this is you've got to remember what my rules were. It had to be available kind of, you know, kind of worldwide, kind of, kind of easily. You have to be able to get, get hold of it. It couldn't cost too much, you know, it was either something that you could easily afford with a few days or weeks of saving or whatever, or be like a one-off Christmas gift, you know, that kind of thing. And, yeah, I think this ticks all those boxes, but the thing that sort of swayed it for me was cultural impact. This thing has had one hell of an impact on the Sonic fandom. In fact, I guarantee you, if you go to a Sonic convention, or even if you go to a convention where someone that's got something to do with Sonic is going to be there, you will see a Sonic fan with one of these. And it's this book. And some of you are probably screaming, A BOOK? <laughs> a BOOK? Why you pick a book? Well, this is the 20th anniversary history of Sonic the Hedgehog book. And if you can believe it, this actually came out originally in 2011, so it's nearly 10 years old now, if you can believe that. I was shocked when I realised that this was um, this this was around for that long. I thought this was like a 25th anniversary pro item, but no, 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 I was, I was wrong. I was very mistaken. It's actually a 20th anniversary item. And the thing with this book is it has had some criticism for the actual content. Um, you know, it's full of artwork. It's full of information about pretty much every single Sonic game from 1991 even be even prior to that actually you know it goes into the development of Sega of Sonic 1 itself it's got character bios in here of so many different characters and yeah it's even got villain artwork as well you know it, it really did go into quite a lot of I wouldn't say intense detail but more than what you would expect for something like this and I know some people have said that a lot of it has been sort of ripped from various Sonic wikis and whatnot, but yeah, I mean, that was kind of, that was kind of going to happen with something like this, unfortunately. But the thing that sort of swayed it, aside from the fact that, you know, it was fairly, it was fairly good, well priced. I think it was about uh, 20 or 30 pounds when it was released. It's not that big, you know, it, it, you can carry this around fairly easily. You know, there's not much weight to it. So it's fairly easy to sort of put in a backpack and carry it around or, you know, it's a really good coffee table book as well. But the thing that sort of swayed me as to why I think this is probably one of the best pieces of Sonic merch that's ever been released was the cultural impact um, stipulation rule I came up with. And the thing is, if you go to any Sonic convention, and I'll even include the Sonic Adventure music experience that happened just a month ago, you can find people that will bring this book because people like to use it as an unofficial autograph book. Now, I am far from the first person to do this. I've seen so many people get signatures in this book, either in the first two pages. I've seen people ask uh, Takashi Izuka and Yuji Naka to actually sign the front cover. I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> Don't, I definitely wouldn't recommend that. I would definitely recommend you get the pages signed. I've seen people wanting, like, um, like they've gone to voice actors and asked them to sign the character pages. I've seen people approach uh, different band members of Crush 40 and find their favourite game that was out that they did the best music for, that they think at least, and get them to sign that. I have seen fans basically take this book and turn it into an unofficial autograph book. And every convention since this book has been released, you can find people that have taken it I have seen it appear at conventions in America, in Japan, in the UK, across Europe, and I've even seen it appear at a convention in Russia, if you can believe that, because, you know, it hasn't been translated into Russian. It's, um, from what I know, it's only available in French and English, which is crazy to think it's had that, that huge, diverse, um, you know, it's got that 
big diverse appeal. And that's why I think this is one of the best, if not the best item that has been released in the 2010s, Sonic merch-wise, because name me another item in the Sonic fandom that's had that kind of impact, that people take regularly to conventions to get signed, that people own in such high numbers, because this, uh, this particular book is numbered, and this one's actually um, book number 300, and I know there's more than that out there, but... That kind of shows just how much this book means to people. They use it as an unofficial autograph book and they will take it back to conventions and get updated signatures from people and people who they've spoken to will actually re remember when they signed it and stuff. So yeah, that's why I think this is the best piece of Sonic merchandise that has been released since 2010. The History of Sonic the Hedgehog 20th Anniversary book. Purely down to the fact it wasn't too expensive. It was available fairly easy, you know, you could get it worldwide. And also down to the fact that fans have taken this book and they have loved it and they've turned it basically into not just a history of Sonic, but a history of their time meeting their various heroes. And that's why I think this is one of the best, if not the best item, Sonic merchandise wise that has been released in the last 10 years. Okay guys, so I'm kind of out of breath now. <laughs> I've been talking for a long time. But anyway, guys, those were my top five things. Um, there's other stuff which I could have brought up as well, but like I said, I kind of wanted to limit it to stuff that sort of fit my rules on price, availability, um, cultural impact, which I think makes a much more interesting list. But do you disagree with me? Please let me know what you think are some of the best, if not the best pieces of merchandise. And do you own any of the ones that I've seen? Do you agree with me that they're awesome? Or, or, or not, or do you disagree with me? Let me know what you think. What are your top five? Put that down there in the comments right now. I want to see what your top five things are. And yeah, you can ignore my rules if you like. Ignore my rules. Are you the guy that owns the £40,000 Sonic painting? I want to see you post in the comments. I want to hear you say, yeah, I've got that, mate. It's on my wall. I throw darts at it. Yeah. Yeah, I want to see that. I want to see that. So let me know what you think. Let me know what your top five things are. I hope you've had a good Christmas. I hope you had a really nice new year. Let's go to 2020 and buy more things. Yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.